Meet Arnold. Today marks the first day of his vacation. And don't even think that I felt sorry for this little piece of crap or that I care about your comments asking to give him a rest. Someone anonymous just sent him a free invitation to a holiday on a lake. Hmm. It's a really nice place and quite suspiciously familiar. Holy crap, holy! It's Jason Voorhees! Jason is a seven-foot-tall madman with a tremendous craving for violence. Trying to run away or hide is useless. He has an inexplicable ability to suddenly appear behind his victim. Attack is the best form of defense. Set a trap for him. After being struck by lightning, Jason became super resistant to damage, but he still has no chance against a saw. Good lord, Arnold, you're like a monkey with a hand grenade. I can't trust you with anything. What a twist. Jason probably didn't want you to die in any possible way, except from him. Why are you acting so happy? Voorhees always resurrects, so you need to quickly come up with a plan B. If he can't be destroyed, then you have to limit his ability to move. You could pour concrete over his legs, and then he won't be able to follow you. Though there is one problem. Concrete needs several hours to harden. You just have to keep Jason in view and damage his limbs every time he starts to heal. You are now together forever. Aim at the knees, Arnold. The damage will be more serious and recovery will take longer. I don't understand. What's happening? Arnold, I am your father. <laughs> Seems like you played for a little too long today, Arnie. The only sensible solution is to go to bed. Good night, Arnold. Spending the whole day playing video games won't go unnoticed. After such excitement, something terrible can happen. For example, sleep paralysis. REM sleep is a state in which the body is immobilized. With sleep paralysis, your brain wakes up, but your muscles stay frozen. So you can see and hear, but you can't move. During these moments, hallucinations start to occur, and it feels like a demon is sitting on you. But this isn't for long. What's wrong, Arnie? Are you afraid to sleep in the dark? About 10% of people on Earth suffer from nyctophobia, the fear of darkness. Scientists believe that this trait is genetically inherited. Our ancestors were afraid of being eaten by nocturnal predators, and so our imagination paints the most terrible pictures in the dark. Ooh, it looks like there's someone behind that window. Ha! Huh. In the world ranking of candy-ass scaredy pants, you, Arnold, get first place. All fear is formed in the amygdala of the brain. A feeling of fear is formed in this little tiny one and a half centimeter sack. There were actual cases when people's amygdala was destroyed due to a disease called Erbach White. This permanently disables the fear response. But this most definitely doesn't apply to you, Arnold. You're afraid of everything, even your own shadow. Okay, okay, I'll turn on the light, just so you know that nobody's here. But sleeping with the lights on is a bad idea, too. It suppresses the amount of melatonin produced during sleep, which can lead to excess weight. Therefore, the choice is obvious. In order not to become an overweight, yellow-bellied poltroon, you need to sleep in the dark. Yeah, falling asleep when it feels like someone else is in the room is not an easy task. Maybe it's just your imagination. Or maybe not. The world was consumed by a new epidemic. The infected have spots on their skin. A terrible rash covers their entire face. They cough continuously and their front teeth fall out. And in order not to be isolated, people are inoculating en masse by buying the vaccine on the black market, deliberately putting themselves at risk as the vaccine has not yet been approved. But they do this so they can return to normal life as soon as possible. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. 
here she is. Wow! What did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh. How did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie. It has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you going to do? Wow, now that, that, that's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way. That's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's going to kick some butt. Yikes, this is kind of brutal even by my low standards. But very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch. This is is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin, the most mysterious person of the 20th century. He's credited with hypnotic abilities and an extraordinary gift of healing. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80-proof potion. Looks like you're going to have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not going to be taken down so easily. Arnie, you're the only one left. Arnie, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there is no enemy but yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. You were a nice guy. Ooh, now I see. What a twist. Arnold, I congratulate you. Now that you're finally getting married, though to a zombie. Although, you're a zombie yourself. But what's the difference? Hey, stop eating in the store. Those vegetables are GMO, genetically modified organisms. This tomato contains a silkworm gene, and your normal everyday cucumber has a 40% similarity to a human from a genetic standpoint. But don't be afraid. GMO isn't scary, and I know just how to prove it to you. Let's genetically modify you, Arnold. It's illegal to do such experiments on human beings. But in 2018, two genetically modified babies were born in China. They were programmed to have immunity to HIV. Now, we're in the Pentagon's tippity top secret laboratory. They mainly produce GMO soldiers. CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology that allows the DNA of one organism to be implanted into the DNA of another. A regular fish was implanted with genes from a bioluminescent jellyfish. Now it's a glowfish. Vegetables are modified for longer storage and better taste. 
But what about you, Arnold? Do you want to be taller? We can use the Michael Jordan gene. And we'll remove the sweating gene from you, so you stop stinking so much. And meet Arnold 2.0. A new life has begun. Without sweat, people will finally sit next to you on the bus, and your neighbor's grandma will stop calling you a short little redheaded virgin. Now she'll just call you a redheaded virgin. Yes, genetic engineering isn't perfect yet, but it is the future. Designer GMO babies are coming soon, and it'll be possible to remove the cruelty gene from criminals. It's a new stage of evolution. Sweet dreams, Arnold 2.0. Hey, what's going on? Arnold, did you steal all the syringes from the lab? What, you want to inject yourself with the strawberry gene to smell good? And a corgi gene for a perfect butt? Don't do this, Arnold. Stop! Oh, ye gods, what have we done? I was wrong. Genetic engineering is dangerous, not only for the organism, but for the whole city as well. Let's wish Arnold's new friends a big bon appetit. Now, we should probably get to know them a little better. So, werewolves are called lycanthropes. That's the name they got from ancient Greece. The author of the term is Herodotus, a historian from 2,500 years ago, who, when describing Scythia, mentioned people who could instantly turn into wolves. As for vampires, the word vampire first appeared in the Oxford English Dictionary back in 1734. <gasps> Arnold, you're alive! I'm so happy! But wait, what's that on your neck? No, you gotta be kidding me! You're actually the first person ever to get bitten by both a vampire and a werewolf at the same time. I'm already wondering just what the heck you're gonna look like. Well, you try to figure out how that's gonna work. I'll tell you an interesting fact. In 1999, 907 Americans took out insurance policies on themselves in case they suddenly turned into werewolves during a full moon. Arnold, looking like that, you'd be discovered a little too quickly. You need to choose a less obvious form. Moreover, back in medieval times, redheads were considered vampires. Ooh, Frankie has already added you to his friend list. That's sweet. He's also assembled from a bunch of random crap, just like you. Everyone knows about the ancient animosity that exists between vampires and werewolves, but I would have never guessed that I'd see such a thing in a single body. Oh, so you're getting hungry now. And you need food for two. Go, search for your victim. The Yay. perfect victim. Bon appetit, Arnie. Wait, Arnold, where are you? What did you expect? You can't go against the call of the wild. Just remember to clean up after your dog. Way to be a bloodsucker. With your moves, Arnold, you need to start thinking about going vegan. Ooh, I forgot to warn you. A double creature gets a double hunt. You need to put aside your differences, because you've got common enemies now. Prayer ain't gonna help you, buddy. And of course, garlic is deadly to you now, you moron. You're not the first victim of the hunt. In the 16th century, the French parliament passed a law to exterminate all shapeshifters. As a result, from 1520 to 1630, more than 30,000 people were killed in France who were thought to be werewolves. Lucky you, Arnold. The guys from Greenpeace are always on the lookout. Pretty creepy in here. Hey, who turned off the light? Arnold, you better not touch anything. What's going on? Arnold, run! 
mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century. And we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. You've been teleported a lot during our science show, but did you ever wonder how the teleporter works? There are several ways to travel through time. Let's start with wormholes. Where have you been dreaming of going? To Australia? No problem, get in. A wormhole is a tunnel through the space-time continuum that theoretically could send you to any point in the universe in just a few seconds. But time is relative, Arnie, and it might take just a few seconds for you, but on Earth, decades could pass. Congratulations, Arnie. You're in Australia in the year 2050. It's a little uncomfortable, yeah? And what if you needed to move around at the same time? Quantum teleportation can help in this matter. Your body consists of a hundred trillion cells, which in turn consists of a hundred trillion atoms each. And each atom contains tiny pinpoint particles, quanta, which could help you teleport over huge distances. It would be great to find someone who could help you build a quantum teleporter. Well, look who's here, Rick and Morty. Arnie, take their drawings. With their help, you could create a device for instantaneous movement anywhere in the universe and even into alternate universes. Now, when the teleporter's ready, climb into the box and make sure there's no one else inside. Well, so long, Arnold. In quantum teleportation, the original body dies and a duplicate is created at the destination point. No big loss in your case. Wow! I told you, during teleport, you need to be alone inside the booth. Don't touch anything in the laboratory. What have you done? Your DNA, which was hybridized with that of a scorpion, was transmitted through the satellite system and turned all the inhabitants of the planet into human-scorpion hybrids. You've destroyed Dimension C-137, you stupid idiot, Arnie. Rick and Morty would have traveled back to the original universe, where the mutants don't exist, but you can only do it a couple of times. I don't think we want to see what happens to Arnie in this universe. Better we go back to Australia. Fortunately, I saved Arnold's quantum data, and therefore have the ability to recover his useless body. Arnie, you should crawl through the wormhole in the direction of your home in 2018. And don't forget the blueprints of your body. It seems now we know how humanity will create a teleporter in 2050. Oh my god! Did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? 
No, actually, it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's going to happen now? Is the big show of the season canceled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good as new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which after transplantation even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace mm. these beautiful heads. <gasps> You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more and... Is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. We're holding an Among Us style party. It's a popular game with over 500 million players and more than any other game in history. With 97% of players playing the free version on mobile devices, but most of the revenue is generated from the paid PC version. Of course, we're playing the free version. If it's free, I'll play as well. And I chose Brown for a reason, because he's kicked out less than 65% of the time. In more than 90% of votes, people choose to kick out black, and it's the exact color you have, Arnold. Let the games begin. The most important thing is to act quickly, because you can be killed at any time. And here's the first murder. Don't worry, we have a lot of detectives here. They'll immediately figure out that you're not the imposter. Oops. I'm pretty sure you were thrown under the bus here, Arnold. It's time to get the hell out of here before you're chucked out into space. You need to complete tasks in the game to make it clear to the rest of the players that you're not an imposter. Whoops. This room is already occupied. Let's not do this couple. There's a new task. You need to extinguish the fire in the electrical room. Looks like it worked. They believe you. Come on, help out this player. I think I saw a fire extinguisher. Arnold, someone is seriously trying to frame you. Moreover, according to statistics, the electrical and admin rooms are the most dangerous places. If you're actually an imposter, you need to blow up the engine and win the game. It's not working. That's cool, Arnold. So you aren't an imposter. Congratulations. Careful. Got you, my friend. Forgive me. We had fun. But now you and I have to part ways. But we know for sure you're not an imposter. Now we just have to find out who is. But sometimes the imposter is much closer than it seems. This is another lesson for you, Arnold. There are no friends in Among Us. <laughs>《I think you all know this redhead pretty well. Come on, finish your burrito and let's go to the garage. I'll show you my new device for shrinking people. Aw, you dropped your burrito. Arnold, are you seriously going to eat that? Okay, the five second rule says you can eat dropped food if it doesn't stay on the floor longer than five seconds. But I wouldn't. Arnold, what's wrong with you? Does your tummy ache? 
This is the perfect chance to test my quantum resizer and find out from the inside what's hurting you. Put this helmet on and I'll connect your consciousness to your nano copy and insert you into your own body. But first take off your underpants. It's the fastest way to get you to your destination. Here we go! You ate a burrito which contained the eggs of some very smart tapeworms. Arnold, just look at this. They built a whole metropolis inside of you. They even built a zoo. Let's check out the zoo. Today's Monday, so there's a 50% discount. My God, this is a zoo of pathogenic viruses and bacteria. I admire your interlopers. Spanish flu, plague, Ebola, tuberculosis, swine and bird flu, and a bunch of other rare pathogens all in one place. Look, there's even my favorite, the little studied baronavirus, also known as sad horse disease. It mainly affects horses, cows, rabbits, and other animals. Arnold, I wouldn't put my fingers in the cage if I were you. It's suspected that the infection causes schizophrenia. Arnold, unfortunately, your stomach hurts due to parasites. Look, they're building a highway in your intestines, a water park in your bladder. If they build a data center in your head, you'll most likely kick the bucket because your head is so small. You need to figure out how to expel them from your body. The sooner, the better. If you open all the cells of this Pandora Zoo, most likely it'll help you expel the worms. Come on, Arnold, go ahead. It's better to cough from a couple of days of Ebola than live with these worms inside of you. Congratulations, Arnold, on the heroic exile of the parasites. The city is in chaos. Two giants, King Kong and Godzilla, are fighting. Good morning, Arnold. What are your plans for today? Hmm, maybe the plan for today is try not to die. Are you scared, Arnold? But what if this is all made up? What if I told you neither King Kong nor Godzilla could survive on Earth? It's pretty simple. Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was 2 meters 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. There Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. But what about the fact that there are other giant creatures on Earth, like whales? Well, everything can be easily explained. The density of water is higher than the density of air and is almost equal to a human's density. That's why we can float on the surface of salt water. This means that the habitat itself supports the weight of living things. For example, whales, whose ancestors 50 million years ago looked a lot like a dog with hooves. Godzilla and King Kong could not exist on Earth at all because of our friend gravity. But let's say we turn off gravity to scientifically allow for the existence of Godzilla and King Kong. Everything on Earth that isn't fixed to the ground would take off into space. That includes people who, if caught in the open, will be shot off into the great beyond. And those lucky few who find themselves in a room somewhere can still live for some time until the houses eventually fly upward. And in the end, our planet will completely crumble into pieces. Therefore, in order to destroy the Earth, you don't need to wait for a fight between two giants. Oh, taking a bath, are you? Imagine if a wave caught you not in the bathroom, but in the sea. The Black Sea is, in fact, also a large bathtub, just the size of 340,000 cubic miles. 
it would take about 243 million years to fill it up. The sudden movement of tectonic plates causes waves. The seabed rises several hundred meters, thereby creating the deadly tsunami waves. We're now located in Portugal. The highest waves in the world are formed here. It's like a cheetah, but in the world of waves, because its speed has already reached 60 miles per hour. One Hawaiian surfer caught a 79-foot wave here. For this, he got into the Guinness Book of Records. Have you ever heard of a killer wave? These are single waves around 80 to 100 feet high, which can't be seen even from a ship. They can appear suddenly and imperceptibly. Therefore, there's very little time to save a ship's crew. Killer waves can sink a ship in just one hit. Even Conor McGregor would envy such a knockout. The largest wave on record was formed in 1958 in the Lituya Bay in Alaska. The wave reached 100 feet in height and covered the mountains approaching the bay. As a result, all vegetation up to an altitude of 1,700 feet above sea level was destroyed. And this is the height of five and a half Statues of Liberty. On a shore, nature itself will hint at the approach of a tsunami. Animals feel the disaster coming and begin to rush somewhere in a hurry or behave strangely. Birds form flocks and fly away. If on land, get in a car. On a bike, run. Ask King Kong to give you a lift at the very least. It's advised to get to a height of 120 <gasps> feet above sea level. Arnold, you better get to the top floor of the Empire State Building. The skyscraper's height is 102 floors, or 922 feet. The elevator goes up at a speed of 700 feet per minute, so you definitely have time. Oh, well, that's also possible. Don't shout underwater, otherwise you'll choke. Keep yourself conscious by any means. 